I thought that. Isn't that nice? I'm just going to talk to you now. This is going to be for silence. You got all four of us? This will be just for cutaways and everything, not horse shit. You know, we do that kind of yeah. Okay, you just listen to me. And I'm going to say horse shit, bullshit, up yours, and things like that. And that, you. it'll look. <laughs> that's supposed to answer back. Oh. <laughs> and you're listening, and that's how it's going to be, okay? You got that? Sure. Yeah. Don't say anything. Don't oh, say don't say anything. Do it again. He's like me, he can't stop talking. Okay, now I'm going to tell you, this time, don't blow it, don't say nothing. Now, I really resented what you just said to me. That really takes me back. I can't believe it. all these years we've known each other, and you could to come on like that and... around. Why are the Grateful Dead still with us today? They like it. They like to come and see the band, hear the music, and, and, and follow us as we follow the changes. It's the same way with us. That's the reason that we're with the Grateful Dead. You know, because it's the most interesting thing in town. As far as I'm concerned, it's the, it's the best high in town. Question. Pointed question. You haven't been around for about two years. Why haven't we seen you at all this time? Well, we've been busy, but not doing The Grateful Dead because The Grateful Dead was out of hand. We were attracting huge crowds. We had to play in large facilities, and it wasn't any fun. And, and like I say, the quality of the experience was going downhill. It was sinking. And we didn't want to get on that wheel and, and stay on that wheel. We wanted to get off, so we just stopped doing it. And... and uh, just hung loose until a better idea emerged, and finally it did. What is the difference now, say, the quality of, uh, of an audience? Let's uh, compare an audience of uh, those early days back at the Fillmore East or the Fillmore West, if you will, and uh, an audience of today. Do you find that the young people are still the same, or has, have things changed a little bit, their attitudes? Kids is kids. Right. When the music is good, it's all good. When the music isn't good, then the audience doesn't, you know, it's just like that. It's a... Uh, I think they're more sophisticated. I think they, in the old days, they used to come to celebrate a lot, and uh, they still come to celebrate. They just celebrate in a different way. What is the way? What, what is the different way? Well, now it's mostly, it's mostly on a satisfying intellectual level. I mean, they, they sit there and they let the music move them a little more intellectually than before. It was more body movement before. I mean, people used to, uh, uh, used to, used to appreciate it more physically. They used to dance more. And they used to... It's a little more cerebral now. Yeah, it is. It is. It is that too. Not a too. whole lot more. Not a lot Just more. A it's more. physical. It's a physical music. We're a dance band, basically. Yeah. You are the Grateful Dead as a dance band? Of course. That's the first time I've ever heard that described in that way. It's a dance oh, yeah. band. If we were in the '30s, we would have been something like Count Basie or those kind of bands. It's a big band. It's started, a big dance band. We started in dance halls. We started playing. We got famous for playing to dancing, dancing audiences. Dancing music. That's all we really. And that, and that's uh, that's where we grew up. That's where our audience grew up. It's a dance band. Our music, used to, our used, music used to go for more than three or four or five minutes. Like some songs used to last for two or three or four hours. And uh, you could really get into a dance then. I mean, you started creating a whole other kind of dance. And the, um, that's, that's basically where uh, the Grateful Dead had got their momentum from the early days. What about the audience? Now, you, you evidently you attract a certain kind of an audience, uh, an audience that's really into, well, so-called heavy rock with blues and everything. What about the general audience? You think, do you ever want to go after the general mass audience? As far as I'm concerned, they're the general audience. I mean, they're our audience, and they're the only ones that we play to. I don't know about But the, it seems like your audience, they don't want the general audience involved. I mean, you, they are the dead audience, and they don't want the mass audience because they're, they're going to be very upset. Well, well they're very real cliquish, I understand. You know, there's a certain kind well, of So-called, cliquish. excuse me, the commercialism. All right, let's talk about, the, you want to get into the commercial world. Uh, I want to be able to do anything well. If I want to do a bell, then then I want to do that well. And if it happens to sound kind of middle of the roadish, if that's what I'm looking for, then I want it to I want to do it well on that level. And if it attracts those kind of people, then God love them. Bring the, them on. The road is the road. The right, left, the middle. I don't know. As long as you do it with dignity and uh, you do it the way you see it and the way you feel it, uh, I don't I don't see anything different in it. This is Mickey Hart doing it with dignity. <laughs> What is happening on that stage, fellas? When you fellas get together, there's sort of a cohesive magic up there. What is going on? There's a camaraderie. Well, it's a, in Oakland, they call it grease. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, it's an alchemical thing that happens. There's something, uh, if something happens between us. There's some electric that happens between us that it doesn't happen with anybody else. It's just that simple. I mean, there's some magic that goes on in the stage. There's something. Something happens. A little happening. Right. I was just outside, and there's a whole bunch of people almost in tears. They're crying. They couldn't get tickets. How do you get tickets to a, to a, a dead concert? Well, there aren't all that many tickets to be had, so we've had to offer them to our most devoted following. And uh, that's the deadheads. That they're our friends. They're our fans. And we've offered, them, offered the tickets to them through the mail. See, they've followed us for years, and um, they've heard a lot of what, we've do, what we do and what we don't do. So this is sort of... Um, this is their reward, as it were, for coming all those years and for knowing who we were and letting... All the changes along with us. Yeah. Uh, 
I forgot what they said. One more time. They come to follow the changes along with us. We change, they change, we all change. And right there, and I think that's the moment that they like to see. Let's talk about changes right now. Let's go back, uh, say, to 1961 in that area. Let's go back to San Francisco. The Haight-Ashbury area, and then uh, the old Fillmore East. How have you fellas changed? Now, let's go back, compare the 60s to 1976. We've gotten better at what we do. More professional, I guess you'd call it. But just better. Uh, we know better how to, to make better music. And it's a time-consuming process learning how to get better at what you do, but that's all we're, that's all we're really interested in doing. I think musically we've grown. I think uh, we've been together a long time, and I think the music shows it. We're more subtle now. We're able to reach greater dynamics. We're able to go higher, and I guess, I guess it's, it's the thing that we like to do the best. You know, it kind of interests me now. now you, you have a theater here of about 5,000 seats or thereabouts. I really don't know how many seats here, but it's not a large hall. What? Now, don't you think you owe it to your fans to go into a Shea Stadium or a Madison Square Garden and do a concert we, we so everybody are, can get tickets? We owe it to our fans to play good and bring them into a good environment. We... We have a responsibility to anybody you invite to come and hear you play, that's it. We want them to come and hear us someplace good acoustically where we can get intimate with them and they can hear what we really sound like without having to belt it out for 40 or 50 or 100 or 600,000 people. To play for 3,000, 4,000 people, it could be a real magical experience. It's, experience. it's beautiful. I mean, that's why we do it. This place was built for music and Shea Stadium obviously was built for sports and music doesn't come come across real well in a, in a sporting ring and and if you had a boxing match here it wouldn't be all all that great you know you'd probably want to do a boxing match in Shea Stadium places like the cow palace were built for cows this place is music and that's why we uh, we we bring them here it's a responsibility that we feel we have to uh, our audience and that's why the deadheads follow us every place and they are like that because they know we wouldn't lead them into any bad place you know to hear our music that's one of the reasons as far even to the Grateful Dead uh, you fellas are known for your bombastic, your, your, your sounds and the music, I mean, like you say, you build an environment, so an audience is very important to you then. Oh yeah, it's half the show. 